Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and of all ages, the one and only Charlie Brown. And once again, it's time to go around the town with me. It's always a weird opening up like that. But anyway, I'm here to talk to you guys about the movie that I just saw for a third time, the movie Bullet Train. But before I get into that, <coughs> can I please talk to you guys? Now, if you guys have been co-pilots or passengers with this ride that I call Around the Town, you guys know that it was unexpected for me to put out my book of poetry, the book entitled That Was Unexpected. <clears throat> the book's been out since 2020, and right now on Amazon, I don't know why, I really don't care, but it's amazing that I just found out that right now it's only going for about 4 or $5 right now on Amazon. So if you get a chance to, please go check it out. Please uh, purchase the book, and, and that way you can have a hard copy yourself, and you can have it. To, to keep on your shelf along with all the other many other books that you have that you think is great that you think are amazing put that book up there with those as well um for those of you that already has has par purchased it thank you guys so much uh for uh, for supporting me and in my journey um and those of you that haven't had an opportunity yet again amazon right now you can go and cop your own copy also <clears throat> This video right now has spoilers. Sorry to tell you, but I really want to jump into this, not just give a review. I want to talk about it a little bit because, again, I saw the movie for a third time. So, with that being said, here we go. Bullet Train. I went to go see Bullet Train again last night for the third time. Uh, the main event, Ferris, went with me. It was actually his idea to go and see it because uh, he hasn't seen it yet. Um, I already seen it twice. I saw it the first time. There was a lot going on in my life at that time, but I ended up missing the the ending and and, and why the bad guy got off. Okay, again, spoiler alert. <clears throat> so, I missed that part, so I went back to see it the second time. And, I, and the first time I saw it, I was just like, wow, okay. Second time I saw it, I was able to like really enjoy the movie. And I realized that the, it, the movie itself is one of my, my favorite genres. Genres that I, I pretty much just classified in my own head as, um, how, how should I put this? You guys remember Scooby-Doo? And you know Scooby-Doo, they always had a thing where they will, they have like a long hallway and a bunch of doors. And they will come out of one door and then run through another door and then come out the other door. And they always had the song playing like, scooby doo -be doo what's going on with you? Everybody's chasing you now. <clears throat> so... I started re referring to those movies that I saw where it has a nice, a, a nice cast and everything revolving around one plot, but there's a bunch of other subplots and stuff going on within the main plot, but they all tie together and, uh, and into a beautiful poet bow at the end. And then the ending is always something over the top or something that's bonkers. And and movies like that, I, I call and I classify them as revolving door movies. Um, now, I know, for example, the movie um, Snatch. If you guys never had a chance to check out Snatch, it actually stars Brad Pitt as well, because Brad Pitt stars in the movie Bullet Train. But Black, Brad Pitt was in a movie called Snatch. It was one of one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. It's a Guy Ritchie film. If you guys haven't checked it out, please go check it out. It's very entertaining. Uh, has Jason Statham in it as well. Uh, a lot of many other like like British actors and stuff like that that and do a, a great job in there. But uh, that's when Guy Ritchie, you know, when he's on his gangster shit, it's good. Okay, but there's subplots and stuff going on revolving around a diamond, revolving around uh, the bookies and stuff like that, and all of it comes together in this nice little bow at the end. Uh, there's there's coincidences that happened, and they're very very funny coincidences that happen, and how each character you know intertwines into one another and that's how bullet train is um when you get to the ending of the movie you realize that the, the the main guy that everyone's afraid of the white death he's the one that actually orchestrated everything um and then when you, once you get to to the ending there's this big over the top thing going on the music is really good as well um <clears throat> i actually listened to the soundtrack for the for the movie while i'm at work to keep me pumped and keep me going um even when the movie first starts off, they hit you with that. Uh, it's, it's a um, it's a cover of uh, you know, "Stand Alive." You know, ah 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 ah, stand alive, stand alive. Ooh, ah 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 ah, stand alive by the Bee Gees. Um, also the song uh, um, 
uh, I Need a Hero. I don't know the exact title of the song, but that song, you know, I Need a Hero. Who, who, do, 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 do. That song is weaved into the movie, <clears throat> and it's really cool and interesting how they do it. Uh, but the basic premise of the movie is that um, a bunch of assassins and are on a train, on a bullet train over in Japan, and um, there's some type of mystery going on to try to figure out why each assassin is, is connected to the other assassin and why they're on a train, but it's a case involved. There's a son of a person, of, of, of somebody, that, uh, you know, in their world that's, that's famous or dangerous that has been kidnapped. Um, there, there's, there's, there's kids uh, being... Be, being pushed off of buildings there is so much going on that once you see the movie how everything is weaved into it it's, it's really cool and it's very entertaining that's why i like the movie so much it, this is a movie that if you go into this movie thinking too hard like you're like well that doesn't make sense or what about that there, there's literally a scene where a guy is clinging on to the back of a bullet train going like 200 and like 39 miles an hour and it, it happens later on in the movie but if you if you're that type of person that's watching that movie and you're like, oh, this is far-fetched, like, stop, stop. A lot of y'all has sat through the Fast and the Furious bullshit. You can sit through this to stop, okay? Um, because <clears throat> Fast and Furious, again, they went from being like, 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 you know, regular street thieves driving uh, fast cars on the streets and for pink slips to turn into mutants and, and super agents and stuff and they they're all over the place. So if you can suspend your disbelief for those, that movie series, you can suspend your disbelief for a little few, for a few things in this movie that were far fetched. But again, they have a lot of really good actors in there. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll just go to the, go up to the top. You have the character Ladybug, um, which is played by Brad Pitt, and uh, his character. He's trying to get on a train just to get a briefcase and get off of it and be done with it. But everything kind of revolves around him, his character, which is really hilarious because he's trying to be a very peaceful person. But in the world and the job that he has, it's very hard to do that. Um, <clears throat> then you are introduced to um, uh, a character called the father. That father is uh, that character is on a train. He he's conflicted with what he has to do because of something that a tragedy that's something that happened in his life, and he's trying to resolve that problem because he feels like he's a, that he failed and let somebody else down. Um, then after that, you have Lemon and Tangerine. And Lemon and Tangerine, if you ask me, are literally my two favorite characters in the entire movie. Their dialogue, the way they carry themselves, the, what they're doing and everything. It's just, it's just hilarious. Um, but, uh, and, and both are played by two actors that I think are amazing actors. I don't, I don't think they're good actors. I think they're amazing actors. They fall into the category of being amazing to me. Every, I, I don't think I've seen them in anything where I didn't think that they gave a good performance. Um, as a matter of fact, the, uh, the one guy who plays <coughs> Tangerine, to be exact, I hope his picture's over here, the one guy that plays Tangerine, uh, he was, uh, uh, aka, um, the Avengers, uh, Quicksilver, uh, which from the Marvel Universe, um, also, um, I believe he was Kick-Ass, uh, in the, in the movie Kick-Ass, which is another comic book property, um, and he also was inside the movie, uh, Godzilla, um, the, the Godzilla that started the current, uh, uh, franchise we have now, you have Godzilla, then you had, uh, Kong St Skull Island, then you had, uh, Godzilla King of Monsters, and then, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, in that series, he was in the first one, um, <clears throat> and the guy who played Lemon, Lemon, whatever you want to, how you pronounce it, um, he, uh, he pops up inside, inside the show called, uh, uh, Atlanta does an amazing job with that. But then again, everybody on Atlanta is amazing. I don't think anybody on Atlanta isn't amazing, okay? Uh, but the character, um, <clears throat> Lemon, he also was just inside of a Marvel property, which um, was, it was, it's a questionable movie to say if it was okay at least. It's below okay. It's kind of like a man movie. Um, but the Eternals, and he actually was one of my favorite characters in Eternal. I want them I wanted them to focus more on like stuff that was going on within his life and within the character that he had. And again, every time I see him performing, he is just a, a joy to watch. Um, <clears throat> after that, you had the character of the prince, and the prince was actually played by a woman. And 
her character was uh was very very manipulative that's the best way to put it with her but i believe she was in a movie called the kissing booth that's where i think i know her from then you have the character known as the wolf which is actually played by bad bunny uh, Bad Bunny over the last, well, I want to say like last year or so, has become a, a, just just a jack of all trades. Uh, he actually popped up and was wrestling and did an amazing job in wrestling and on WWE. So if you guys want to check him out, check out his music and go check that out as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think, uh, did I tag all the characters? Um, then you have the White Death. Uh, I don't want to talk about the White Death that much because... When they revealed who the White Death was, I thought was great. Um, or the character Carter. Once you figure that out and you get to that point, great. Uh, I wanted to talk about the movie because I wanted to tell you guys to go and check it out. Uh, Rating-wise, I'm not going to do a pass or fail for this because it's just a very entertaining movie. And I want as many people to go see it because I think everybody will enjoy it. So, uh, still in theaters right now. And if you get a chance to over this weekend, go check it out. As a matter of fact, today is Saturday. Um, a lot of people don't know, but uh, at, at the movie theater that I'm, that I'm currently going to, or I always go to, um, <clears throat> Cinemark in uh, Southland, in, uh, or Southgate. No, no, it's not South. It's Taylor. In um, Taylor, Michigan. Uh, they're, they're running all their shows today for $3. I don't know what time this is going to go up, but whatever time it goes up, please check this out. And if you get a chance to check it out on the day of, go to the movie theater and check out this movie. You know, support this movie. Go check it out. Brad Pitt, everybody did a great job on this movie. I enjoyed this movie, and I want more people to go and see it. If you can pick up what I'm putting down, around the town, Charlie Brown. Ta-ta.